Father God, and this season, it's harder for some than it is for others. But Lord God, you said in your word that you would supply all of our needs according to your riches in glory. So Father, we thank you for even though there has been loss, there has also been much gain, Father God. You have encouraged and strengthened our faith, Father. You have shown us yourself in a new and a better way light, Father God. Um, we thank you, Lord God, for giving us ample time to minister to others, God, but to spend time with you and to worship. Thank you so much, Father God, for how you have encouraged our hearts when when the well was dry, Father God. Thank you for creating reds, for creating valleys, Father God, and paths, Lord Jesus, through our own personal Red Seas. Truly, there is no God like you. And we say thank you. Lord God, you are mighty. You are mighty to say. You are mighty to deliver. And Father, we thank you for how you are helping us and how you encourage us and how you teach us. Not only about you, but also about ourselves, Father. Forgive us as we forgive those who have wrongfully used us, God, and abused us and talked about us, Lord. Forgive us, Father God, as we may have been the ones who have talked about others and put others down and, and not allowed your light to shine within us as it should be. Father God, we thank you for giving us another opportunity and another chance. Now, Lord God, I ask that you would, Father God, teach through me, Holy Spirit, and let me speak only what you have for me to say, and your word, Lord God, for to teach and minister your word, Lord Jesus, is such a privilege, and it's, it's, it's one I don't take lightly, Father God, so thank you, Lord, may, may I be a blessing to others, God, as you are such a blessing to me, Father God, thank you for my pastor, my associate pastor, our deaconess, trustees, the saints, Father God, and as Sister Jackie Hill Perry says, Lord, in the eighth, Lord God, we thank you for all. We pray your wonderful will be done in our lives and in this world. It is in Christ Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you. God is so awesome. go right into what the Lord has for me. I am so excited. I love God's word. His word is, it's just life. It's amazing how you, you know, we read some of the same passages, but God reveals something else new to us that we never thought about. You know why? Because it's living. It's the living word. 
and living means it gives you life. It, living means it's life. So God is the living word and his word is the living word. Glory to God. Join me as we go to the book of beginnings. Yes, none other than Genesis chapter one. Now my scripture is, is, is actually, my text rather, is coming from this entire chapter. But I will not read this entire chapter. I challenge you to read this on your own time and make sure you hear what God is saying. Read, don't just like read it just to be reading it, but think about what God is saying and then ask him, well, Father, how can I apply this to my life? Okay. So I will be reading verses one, two, I think I'll read verses one through five. It says, this is Genesis chapter one. This is the King James version. In the beginning, God. Pause right there. In the beginning, God. Mm. Stick a pin in that right there. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Verse 3 says, And God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. Verse 31 of that same chapter says, And God saw everything he had made. And behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So as you read Genesis chapter 1, you will see how God created the world in six days. And everything that he created within the world within six days. I, God has blessed me to, to find other hobbies that I didn't realize that I had or that I liked rather, not that I had. On my birthday for the past couple of years, um, I, last year was my 40th birthday. And so of course, you know, being the 40th birthday, I wanted to do something out of the ordinary for me. And so one of my friends suggested, well, what about painting? And so it stuck with me. And I, I went to the, so last year, a, a, a few of my family and my friends went to, went with me to a painting class. I enjoyed it so much. I enjoyed it. I just, I just enjoyed it thoroughly just to be able to create your own, your own work of art, your own masterpiece. Oh, and so I went again this year as well. And it was, it was, it's just fun. Paying for me is, is one thing I like to do when I just want to just alleviate some stress. Just the, the, the colors, the different colors. I really enjoy bright colors. The different colors, the, the warm colors, the, the cold colors, the primary colors, how they all work together to create this beautiful, your beautiful work of art. And it's just amazing how, how you can start out with what seems to be a mess and it turns into this masterpiece. So you get, you get it like, this is a canvas, okay? You get a canvas, you get maybe maybe about two to three col three to four colors rather, and you get some some of the, the primary colors so you can create the other colors that you may need. You know, with you get your your red and your yellow so you can make orange. You get your your red and your blue so you can create purple. Yes, you can buy these color paints, but you can also create your other your secondary paints from your primary paints. And so then you have different brushes and um, different types of 
of of paint brushes and no it does and no you to use the same one i mean you could but your painting might not be as good as it could be if you use some of the correct brushes you have your round tip brushes you have um you have your flat head brushes and i'm not going to try to name some of the brushes because i will mess up but just know there are different types of brushes the type of paint acrylic paint you know it 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 also makes a difference in your painting as well um whether you use water or not within the paint that that makes a difference as well um last year when i did my painting i we had to use water uh this year you know use water to kind of blend some of the the picture that we painted this year when i went painting they recommended us to not use the water to blend it but they showed us some different techniques and it's it's awesome how um even you know when you're i was painting and i I guess there's a part of me that likes to be a little bit of a perfectionist, just a little bit, not too much. Um, but I just want to get it right. I want to know that what I'm doing is right. I want to know, am I on the right track? Because right now it doesn't look like, this painting doesn't look very good at all. I mean, like, it's just like everywhere. Mine doesn't look like they're painting. Why doesn't it look like they're painting? Their painting looks better than mine. Like, and this is just starting out. And so the, the teachers, they'll come around and they say, no, no, you're doing good. You're doing, oh, I like the, they see something that you don't. So he, the, one of the teachers, he came around and he was saying, I, I like your texture there. And I'm like, okay, yeah, because um, I'm just painting. And so we're well, not just painting. I'm trying to get the my wrist right and hold the paintbrush the right way. I'm just trying to copy and mimic what they're doing. And I, I. I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to paint and I'm going to follow what they're teaching us. But this is my creation. This is what I envision. It's not going to look exactly like my, my, the person over here to my right or the person to my left or even the teachers. It's not going to look exactly like them. This is my personal painting and how, um, what I, what I envision. So when you are painting before you paint, you have this, in this vision that you want, this mental picture that you want to, that you want to, um, to portray onto your canvas. Okay. And so what what when i go to the painting class what they do is they go if someone um draws out very lightly what you're going to paint and so um after you do that you know you a lot of times you use the darker colors first and and, and it blends into the other colors and just after you see this picture it's like whoa i took a picture of what my painting looked like before or the blank canvas what it looked like like right as I was painting, during the painting, and then after I finished painting because I wanted to see the process. Now, I don't have the painting that I did on my birthday because that is, I've hung that up at, um, in my office at work. However, I, uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was um, blessed to go to, to have a vacation. And on that vacation, one of the things I wanted to do was to paint. I'm telling you, that is one of the hobbies that I have found I thoroughly enjoy and so I am I envisioned one thing and it wasn't going the way I thought it should go and I was like oh and I didn't have the colors that um some of the colors I needed more colors I need to go shopping for some more colors but um this is this after I finished it this is what I came up with this is my finished product of my painting and do you see how the colors the blue and the purple they blend together and i also blended this uh this is now this is a, a beginner a beginner's painting but it's it's mine and i am happy with it because it's mine i created it it's my masterpiece it's my work of art and of course it's a scripture that says the light the light shines in darkness which is john chapter 1 verse 5a the first part of that verse and so this is what kind of like what I envisioned. It wasn't completely what I what I thought it would be, but however, I'm very pleased with the results and I love how the colors blend in together on this canvas. So I said all of that to let us know we are God's 
canvas. You are God's canvas. Allow him to work in and through you. So my topic that I will expound upon today is a blank canvas. So as we read in, as we read rather, in Genesis chapter 1, the earth was God's canvas. God strategically, strategically created each day for the next event or each day for the next day. And, and he didn't create man first because where would he put them? It says, the scripture says the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. So where would God put man if he created man first? No, if there was darkness there, he created light. Okay, so he created the light and then he he called it day and he called it night. Why? Because the next day he created the light for the sky. He needed the sky, the atmosphere and the air. Okay. He created that so he can be able to, so he can put the sun and the moon and the stars, the lands, the vegetation and the heavenly bodies. He created one after another and he prepared it for the next day. And after all of that was created on God's beautiful canvas of earth or earth's canvas, rather, he created man from the dust of the ground. He prepared man first and then he created woman, woman from the man. Strategic. So what, one of the things that I have learned about God's character and his, his, his characteristics is that God is strategic. If this is the same God that strategically created this world for mankind, for the beauty of for, for his glory, most definitely, but also for man to enjoy. He is strategic in our lives. Be encouraged on today to know that though you may not see God working, know that he is. God is working what we say behind the scenes. God is creating and he's he's doing a new thing and, and, and getting, hallelujah. He's getting the right people in place. He's getting the right situations in order. He's preparing you as well. Because God does not create a mess. He only creates masterpiece. I love when my, my mom, my associate pastor, elaborated and really just enlightened us to know that this does not take nothing takes God by surprise he already knew what is going to take place Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5 God tells tells Jeremiah before I formed you in the womb before before I formed you in the womb I knew you Mm. before you were born, I sanctified you or I set you apart. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. That's Jeremiah chapter one, verse five, the new King James version. Those who are listening to this message, before God formed you in your mother's womb, he knew you. <laughs> He has sanctified you and set you apart for a specific purpose. You are not a mistake. God has so much for you. And the way to find out is to seek after him, to see what it is that God wants you to do. And I, I heard this a message this morning, um, uh, an encouraging word from Jonathan Evans, and I'm summarizing 
that God, he doesn't play any games with us. He's not playing with your heart. What the, the circle of people that God has allowed you to be around. What is it that God wants you to do there? What, to minister his word, to spread his word, to show people, to let your light so shine so that men may see your good works and glorify the father. He just does it in different ways with different talents. God has blessed me to be, to, to be a youth and family program director. So I'm around kids and I'm around um, adults. I'm around parents. My circle of people that God has placed me in, the radius of people that he's allowed me to be in the center of. And so what I, so what God shows me to do is, okay, I want you to spare my word this way. I want you to spare my word this way. I want you to sing today. I want you to, 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 to send this encouraging message. I want you to take this person aside and have a heart to heart. I want you to take this person out to eat. Let's go and have a cup of coffee. Let's go and have, uh, let's go and have a, a prayer meeting. It's expounding upon God's love, his mercy, and showing uh, the good works of, of, of the Lord. I want you to go and help this person pay a bill. God's work for you, his purpose. So that men may see, wow, men and women may see how, uh, how even in the midst of what's going on, you're still portraying God's goodness and God's, God's, God's work and helping other people. And when we help other people who are down, it softens their heart and they want to know. Some want to know more about the Lord. Now, there are some people who are just so hard hearted, but that seed was either planted or that seed was watered. God put you in that person's place, that path, their path rather, for a specific reason. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. I want you to internalize this verse. For God knows the thoughts that he thinks towards you. Says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. Beloved, the things that we go through that are challenging. God is not trying to kill us. No, he has no, he has not or abandoned us. He can't. He said, for I will. I won't leave you, nor will I forsake you. It's not his character. Now, if we leave him, that's on us. But you know what? He's always there. He is omnipresent. He is everywhere. You want to be everywhere. You don't want to be. You cannot run from God. If you climb to the highest mountain, he is there. If you go to the valley below, he is there. He is everywhere. So he has a future and a hope for you. Don't give up. Don't give in. Well, well, well Minister Tanae, I'm getting older. I, I don't know what the Lord will have for me to do. Continue to believe in him and pray. And then listen. And then watch what God has where God has placed you already. Sometimes we think, we may think that, that we should be on a stage or behind a pulpit or in front of a huge crowd of people. And no, that, that's not where God may want you. He may want you on that job, ministering to, ministering to those who are lost. He may want you in that schoolhouse trying to help another teacher. He may want you at Amazon ministering to somebody who feels like all hope is gone. Or maybe even in your own home to your family member. Oh, it could be even cooking. Some people's ministry is cooking for others and ministering God's word. It, God is limitless and will use whomever will allow him to use them. So even those negative situations 
those challenging situations, whereas too, you feel like all oh, hope is gone, where you may have lost your job, where you may be financially um, 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 struggling, where you may be, your health may be declining. You may be even battling, you may be even battling depression. God will use all of that if you allow him to for the good of him, who for the good of them who loves him. Romans 8 and 28, which is my favorite verse. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. Do you see? You see how things work out? It works out for those those of us who choose to love God in spite of what's going on. Glory to God. Who choose to love God even though we don't physically see him. Who choose to love God even though sometimes we don't even know if he's there. Or we may feel like We may feel like he's not there. To choose to have faith and to love God. He works those out. He works every situation out. It didn't say just one situation. It says all things. All things. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Will work out for your good. For my good. Because you know why? Not only do I love God, do do some of you love God, but he has called us. Oh my goodness. God has called us. He has called you according to his purpose. You are his canvas. And just like in a painting, how you can use like to make the purple, red and blue, to, to, to blend in from this blue to this purple, 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 back to the blue, He will use whatever situation, glory to God, and blend it all together. And when when that day comes, when that day comes, when he cracks the sky, or if you fall asleep in the Lord, your masterpiece will be completed. You are complete. We are completed in him. We're already complete in him, but he uses every situation. He uses every circumstance. He uses the good. He uses the bad. He uses the ugly. He uses people who are helping you. He uses people who are talking about you. He uses those who are, who are trying, to, maybe even trying to physically hurt you. He uses all of these for, as his canvas for your life. I can look back over my life and see how God has used my sin, my mistakes, which are actually sin, the sin that I was in. And he used that to blend in and show his mercy and to show his grace. Glory to the matchless name. To work out for my good. He has used my failures to help in my success. So that every day that God is giving you, every day that he gives you life and breath, if you're, if you're watching this today, it's another opportunity to do the will of the Lord. Oh, he'll show you. <laughs> he will show you. He will lead you. He will direct you. Because the thoughts that he has for us is good. Not evil. He loves us. We are his work of art his masterpiece we are his canvas when we submit to the lord when we submit to the lord he can do what he wants to do i mean he's sovereign anyway if you choose not to surrender to the lord then you're not his canvas you're not his canvas but i tell you this john chapter 15 verse 7 christ said if you abide in me and my words abide in you You will ask for what you desire and it shall be done for you. If you surrender to the Lord and then begin to draw nearer and live out his word, his will for your life and what he wants you to do. Oh, you're his canvas. And then you can, then you have the right, the authority. We actually have the authority to ask the Lord for this in our life. 
as long as it is in his will. Glory to God. But as as I was, you know, we were painting and going back to the painting, how I'm looking at other people, their paintings, and I'm like, mine doesn't look like theirs. Theirs looks so much better. I want to try to do mine like theirs. Don't. Just like I didn't go through what somebody else may have went through, but it doesn't negate my testimony in one way. It doesn't, it doesn't make me, I shouldn't feel any less loved or just because my story may not be as horrific as somebody else's story. That doesn't mean God's going to use me any less or he won't use you any less just because you, just because now I have had the wonderful privilege of having parents who brought brought us up in the way of the Lord. And I chose to surrender my life to him. Why? Because of the, the, the life that my parents lived before me. Not hypocrites, but living as Christ told them to live. A marriage that Christ told them to have. And God is continuously blessing them. Why? Because they surrender under the Lord. They continue to submit unto his way. And they continue to teach us his way. But they live it. So I was blessed to come under that beautiful teaching, that beautiful passion, passion for knowing who God is and his word. But somebody else may not have. And there are so many people who have not came under such a, a teaching of the Lord. They did not get trained under God's way. That doesn't mean God still can't use you. No, he wants to use you. He wants you to know that he has a divine plan for you. And it may not be ex so extravagant as, as being famous and singing um, the most popular gospel song or giving the most uh, knowledgeable word. It may simply be to encourage somebody else who has who is in the same path that you were in. And now you are helping them to see who Christ is. <laughs> Glory to God. Don't downplay your life. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Romans 12 and 2 says, And do not conform to this world. It's the New King James Version. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Continue to study his word. We have to stay close in his word. We have to continue to pray. We have to spend that time with him to renew our mind. If not, I'm going to want my pain to look like theirs. And I'm going to do what I have to do for it to look as good as theirs or what I think. No. But when we see, when we allow this mind, Philippians chapter 2 verse 5. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. When we continue to renew our mind. Oh. We will know what God wants for us to do. He will reveal it to us. And we will live that life that is good and acceptable unto him. And let me tell you. When we continue. Listen to this. Encouraging words. Isaiah chapter 58 verse 11. The Lord will guide you continually. So when you feel lost and you feel like, I don't know where I should go, stand still and listen to the Lord. Get in his word. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your soul in a drought. Oh, come here, Joseph. Come here, Joseph. And, and, and interpreting Pharaoh's dreams and being able to, to get an abundance in the midst of uh, uh, before. And get an abundance before the drought hit. And God gave him strategy. I told you God is a strategic God. Woo! Joseph's entire life was strategy. For what, the, for what the enemy, what the devil meant for evil. God meant it for good. I encourage you in that. What the devil means for evil in your life. He's counting you down. He is going one. He's going two. 
But wait a minute. He's almost at three. But then God gives you this renewed sense of, of purpose. And you, you come back up ready to fight. Because you are striving in him. He will satisfy your soul in a drought and strengthen your bones. You should be, you shall be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. Let me tell you, I have, I have a plant. I really would love a green thumb. And I guess if I took out the time, I could have a green thumb. My daddy has a green thumb. I have this cactus plant. <laughs> And so I'll forget to water it a lot, but it's still hanging in there. And so when I do water it, well, before I water it, the, you know, the, the cactus, the cacti are just like, oh, I really, I really would like for her to give me some water. I'm, I'm, I'm in a drought here. I need some water. So I pour, when I pour that water on there, it's amazing how it, per it, it perks up and it's like, and the, and the color comes back more vibrant. It's like, thank you. But see, even in the midst of a drought, God will water you. People will wonder, where, how is it that you still have this joy with this pandemic going on? How is it that you still have this joy? I thought you lost your job. I thought they were threatening to take this and that from you. Uh, you know, because one, the joy of the Lord is my salvation. But also God said he would supply my need according to his riches and glory. What? His riches and glory? Limitless. So he's got this. Don't you know, I serve the God who created this world. This earth was his canvas. Don't you know, we serve the living God, Jehovah Jireh. It is the Lord who provides. We, we, we serve this living God who will create any avenue for his children when we are obedient to his will mm, and obedient to his word. He will create it. He'll do you know he'll take a he'll take a a, a a bad thing and work it out for my good. He'll take a good thing and works it out for my good. That's the God I serve. This is the God that will part open my personal Red Sea and allow me to walk on dry land while my enemies are pursuing me. And then when I get into safety, he will close that Red Sea on top of my enemies that I won't have to worry about them ever again. This is the same God that will wipe away all your debt and you debt and you don't know how you're just grateful. This is the same God that will provide a job for you when you least expect it. This is the same God that when the doctors have given you up and they don't know what else to do will heal your body. This is the same God. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9. But, I, but as it is written, eyes has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. God has so much prepared for you on this side of, 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 of glory. He's got, oh, we don't even realize how much God has prepared for us in eternity with him. Oh, I'm excited. But to know that God will take whatever situation and that he will use it on his canvas. He will use whatever it is to blend things together, to blend colors together, or to blend, not colors rather, I'm, I'm speaking of a painting, but to blend your troubles, our troubles and our good, our good together. He will blend it all together and it will, and we will have, we will come out as this beautiful masterpiece if you allow God to do that. Beloved, God is, he is, he, he's a gentle, he's gentle. He will not force himself on us. If we choose to follow him, blessed be the name of the Lord. And blessed are, blessed are you. But if we choose not to follow him, don't expect God's choices, blessings for your life. God is Elohim. He's a strong creator. And in verse, I love that in verse one, that is how he is introduced. And how, how do we know this? In the beginning, God. 
in the beginning, God created. He is, that lets us know that God has no beginning. God has no end. And if I can explain that, then I, I would be one of the smartest people in the world. No, I can't explain that. I just accept it. I accept the fact that he is, he was before time. The earth had a beginning and beloved, the earth has an end. And it's, and, and Christ will be here soon. I don't know when, I just know he's coming. And so one of my purposes that God has, a purpose that God has instilled in me and a passion that God has instilled in me is to warn and actually should be for every believer is to encourage and warn, encourage the believer and warn those who are not believers and try to, to convince them that Christ Jesus is the way, that Christ Jesus is the truth, that Christ Jesus is the life. And that you cannot get to God unless you go through Christ Jesus. He paid the price. He deserves to be the only way, the truth, and the life. He deserves to be the way we get to God, our Father. Christ Jesus is our Redeemer. There are so many other religions or, or cults, cults, ways of thinking, foolish ways of thinking. Yes, I said it. There's so many other methods, other roads that, that people are thinking, oh, I can get to God through, through this way and through good works. No, it doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter how famous somebody is. Somebody, you can be, there are going to be a whole lot of famous people that are not with God because instead of trusting in the Lord Christ Jesus, they trusted in their riches and they trusted in this fame and their heaven is now. And some of us who may not ever be financially prosperous, uh, we may not be, who may not be in the best of houses, in, in driving the best of cars, and sometimes even not in the best of health. But we know that to live is Christ and to die is gain. That we know that there's that Christ holds that peace hallelujah that passes all understanding beloved we may not have a lot but if you have christ jesus as your savior you have more than enough you are an overcomer and he will use whatever situation to blend together for his glory and for your good he will work it out well even even if there are people who are sick and maybe on their deathbed, even now. But that joy that they have to know that they will not suffer anymore, that when they close their eyes on this in this realm, they will open up their eyes to see Christ and be with him forevermore. You tell me how can we lose? How can we lose? And there gives that joy unspeakable. To know that even if God does not change your situation, the fact that he's changing us oh, and making us better and drawing us closer to him is worth it all. If you don't know Christ as your Savior, please try him. When Adam sinned, The curse was brought upon us, upon mankind. And it broke a covenant relationship with God. And Christ was the perfect and spotless lamb that took on our sin. And he did not deserve it. The same God that said, let there be. And it was. And he saw that it was good as the same God that walked with his creation. Came in the form of Christ Jesus. Was tortured by his creation. Was abused by his creation. He died for his creation and he rose again for his creation.
so that we can be brought back to God and have this beautiful relationship with God, but through Christ Jesus. He is the Redeemer. He is the Son of God. If you believe that, that Christ Jesus, He is the Son of God, that He died and that He rose again from the grave, you believe that, then you shall be saved. And when you make Him Lord over your life, he helps you to live this life. So would you pray this prayer with me? Dear Father, thank you for your son Christ Jesus. I believe that Jesus is who he said he was. He is the Son of God. And that he is our Redeemer. I believe that he died and that he rose again from the grave that one day he is coming back. I pray, Lord, that you will help me throughout this life. Be my Lord and Savior and help me to live for you. I thank you and I believe and receive this in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. If you pray that prayer, I would like to say welcome to the hour of the family. Now comes the part where you have to live it, which can be very challenging at times. Not every day, but there are times it is challenging. Begin a study. Get with somebody that knows and that can help you to study and know what God's will is. Thank you so much. And you be blessed in the Lord. This is today Williams Minister today, Williams. And I love you, and so does God. He loves you way more than I can. On behalf of Pastor and Associate Pastor Lord and the Rayma Church family, we love you and God loves you too. Thank you for joining us.